In this video, we will look at how to use mesh current method to solve a circuit containing a dependent source. The dependent source is highlighted here. We can see that we have an arrow inside the symbol. So this means this dependent source is a current source. And then the magnitude of this current source is in terms of another current in the circuit. So this means this is a current controlled current source. The main steps in applying mesh current method to solve a given circuit are shown here. Mesh current method requires application of Kirchhoff voltage law and we adopt passive sign convention when writing the KVL expressions. So the first step is indicated here. We need to identify and label the mesh currents. Recall that a mesh is a loop that does not contain any other loops. And this circuit has four meshes. These have been labeled IA, IB, IC, and ID. And also we have assumed clockwise direction for two of the meshes and anti-clockwise direction for the remaining meshes. The second step is to check for a super mesh. So voltage sources, whether independent or dependent, do not cause a super mesh but current sources can cause a super mesh. Here, this independent current source is only present in this mesh. Thus, this current source is not going to cause a super mesh. Similarly, this independent, this dependent current source is only present in this mesh. It is not located at the boundary of two meshes. Thus, in this case, although there are two current sources in the circuit, there is no super mesh. Let's now apply Kirchhoff voltage law to each of the meshes. So we start with mesh A at the 50 volt source. So current IA is entering the terminal marked minus and leaving the terminal marked plus. So this means going from minus to plus is a voltage rise. So this gives minus 50. The next term is a voltage drop across the 6 ohm resistor. So this is 6IA. The last circuit element in this mesh is the 8 ohm resistor. There are two mesh currents flowing in opposite direction through this resistor. Hence, since we are writing KVL for mesh A, we give priority to the direction of mesh A and this gives us the last term as 8 i a minus i b is equal to 0. <clears throat> Let's move on to mesh b starting at the 8 ohm resistor. So this will be plus 8 i b minus i a. This is because there are two mesh currents in opposite direction and we are giving priority to current i b. Through the 2 ohm resistor, we again have two mesh currents, but because one current is clockwise and the other is anti-clockwise, we can see that mesh currents IB and ID are flowing through this resistor in the same direction. So this gives plus 2 IB plus ID. Through the 4 ohm resistor, similarly IB and IC are flowing in the same direction. So this gives plus 4 IB plus IC is equal to 0. Now we need to deal with meshes C and D. If there is a current source in a single mesh, then this leads to a simplification because the mesh current is equal to the current source magnitude. So here for mesh C and D, we do not need to apply Kirchhoff voltage law. We can see that this current IC is in the same direction as the current source. Therefore, we can directly write IC is equal to 5 amps. Similarly, for this mesh current ID, we can see that it is flowing in the same direction as the current due to the dependent current source. So we can directly write ID is equal to 3i1. Whenever there is a dependent source in the circuit, we need to write the dependent source constraint equation. And this means 
relating the parameter that is controlling the magnitude of the current source to the mesh currents. Here we need to relate I1 to the mesh currents. I1 is the current flowing through the 6 ohm resistor in this direction and for this particular circuit we can see that IA is the only mesh current flowing through this resistor. Thus we can write I1 is equal to IA. Thus we can see that actually here we only have two unknown variables which are IA and IB. So this result can be substituted here. So this means ID is 3 times IA and then we can substitute the values of ID and IC in these two equations. Hence we have two variables, two unknown variables IA and IB and two equations and we can solve to show that IA comes out 3 amps, IB comes out minus 1 amp, IC we already know is 5 amps and ID is 3 times IA. So this comes out 9 amps. Once the equations are solved, we can solve for the circuit variables. Here we have to find the power associated with the dependent source. So let's assign, we can see that in this circuit, the dependent source is connected in parallel with the 2 ohm resistor. This means the voltage drop across the 2 ohm resistor is the same as the voltage drop across the dependent current source. Let's assign this polarity to the voltage drop across the current source. Then the power associated with the current controlled current source is given by the product of the voltage and the voltage is the voltage drop across the 2 ohm resistor. So applying Ohm's law since we have this polarity and IB and ID are in the same direction the voltage drop across the dependent current source worked out using the 2 ohm resistor is 2 times ID plus IB and then the current is the current source magnitude which is 3I1 and applying passive sign convention we can see that this current is entering the terminal marked minus. So we must use a minus sign with the power calculation. Now substituting the values, this comes out minus 2 times 8 times 9, which is equal to minus 144 watt. Thus in this circuit, the current control current source is supplying this much power to the circuit. In one of the earlier videos, we solved the same circuit using node voltage method and the solution is shown here. We can see that when we apply node voltage method, we have to solve three simultaneous equations. where and also the power that we worked out, however the power that we worked out works out to be the same. Thus in terms of complexity for this given circuit, node voltage method required a solution of three simultaneous equations, while mesh current method required solution of only two equations. Thus mesh current method in this case results in lower complexity in terms of solving the circuit. This completes the solution to this problem.